Welcome to the remodeling video for Home Designer Software. In this video segment, I'm going to review the process of removing walls, creating an open design, and raising the ceiling to make changes to the roof. As you can see in the rendering, we've created a raised roof, and in the photograph you can see the current as-built condition. On the back side of the house, very similar, we've created a covered porch and again raised the ceiling. For this remodel project, the homeowner hired a draftsman and a builder. The draftsman was not able to provide the 3D visualization, so the homeowner used Home Designer Suite and then later Home Designer Pro to see the raised ceilings and the changes to the roof prior to the work commencing. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the steps involved. If you're doing a remodel and you need to make changes beyond the standard automated building tools, such as changing the roof, the best product to use is our Home Designer Pro product, which you can rent for $49 a month. Home Designer Pro is the software I'm going to use in the video. As for your as-built measurements, Chief Architect offers a free app called Room Planner. You can go to roomplanner.chiefarchitect.com. You can download the app and take your measurements, and then you can import that floor plan into the Home Designer product and go ahead and begin your design work. Let me go into Home Designer Pro, open up the floor plan, and let's get started in the process. Now I have the floor plan open for the as-built condition. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, you can import the room planner file of your floor plan with the room planner app. You'll find that underneath the menu system. It's called the import room planner file. In 3D, the program automatically will create your roof. And as I rotate around, you can see the back of the house, and that's where we're going to add the covered porch as well as the front of the house. Now first things first, in the automatic roof tool, which you can get access to under the build menu. Let's go ahead and take a look at the properties and change the pitch of this roof. The current pitch of the roof is a 3 and 12. Let's go ahead and make that change to 3 and 12 and take a look at the difference. This is a quick way to visualize the difference between an 8 and 12 pitch and a 3 and 12 pitch. Now you can make further changes to the roof. I'm just going to go ahead and select the front wall here. I'm going to click on the wall and sometimes you actually have to press the tab key. If you notice down in the lower left hand corner it says exterior room. If I press the tab key that changes to a 3D wall editor and now I can double click on that and make changes to that roof right here in the roof structure tab and you can change it to a full gable and some other changes in here as well. You can also override individual roofs and change the pitch for an individual roof plane. If I were to change this to a full gable wall, you can quickly see what the difference is. You'll also find the same tool down here in the toolbar menu that you can toggle the wall back and forth between a hip and a gable roof. There are a variety of different roof styles you can build. If I go back into the option to build the roof, you can see these roof styles on the roof style panel. And if you click on any one of these different styles of roofs, it will launch the help file and show you pretty much how to create any style of roof using the automated tools by opening up the wall and making the changes. Let's take a look at what we're actually going to create. You can see on the front of the house, we've extended the porch, we've covered it, and raise the ceiling up. On the back side of the house, as I rotate around, we've also covered the porch, we'll zoom out a little bit, raised the roof, and inside the house, we've also created an open area and removed some walls. Let's go through the process it's involved to create the remodel project. In the floor plan view, I've highlighted the four rooms we're going to make changes to, the porch, the living room, the entryway, and the front porch. When I first began the design, the default room height was set at 9 feet, and this project actually has 8 foot ceilings. I'm going to begin with making a change underneath the default settings, so the entire room is set at 8 feet. You'll find that setting here under Floors and Rooms, under Current Floor, I'll double click on that, and in this case, you'll notice that the ceiling is set to be 109. There's a couple of settings, a rough ceiling, a finished ceiling. Whichever one you end up measuring, you can change this. It makes adjustments for the various structure components, such as your sheetrock and your finished flooring. I'm going to set this down minus 12 inches because it's an 8-foot ceiling. As you press the tab key, you'll see the information update. When I make that change, Let's go ahead and take a 3D view of this. I'm going to use the dollhouse view camera, and now we can take a look at the floor plan. Any one of these rooms you can actually highlight, double click to open it, and you can verify under the structure panel what the height is. So if you have different rooms that are different heights, you can open up an individual room. And what I just did was I changed all of the rooms on this floor to be an 8-foot ceiling. 
Now for this design what we want to do is we want to create an open area. Currently the kitchen is actually stored in this area against this wall and the homeowner is going to be relocating that to the other side of the room and he wants to create an open area right in this area. Now your first reaction might be to click on that wall and press delete but we need the walls for room definition. If I click in this living room, notice how there is a highlight in that room. That's what allows me to raise the ceiling and control the structure component. So rather than clicking on this wall, again press the tab key, and deleting it, I'm going to toggle it to be an invisible wall so I maintain my room definition. You can either double click to open up the wall or once it's highlighted, again make sure that in the lower left hand menu it says the 3D wall editor. There is an open button down here that you can also use to open up the wall to get the wall specification dialog. Inside of this panel on the general section you can come in here and check the button for invisible. You can now see that that wall is removed. We've created the open space the homeowner was after and now what I can do is I can come in here and make the appropriate adjustment. In this case I'm just going to click on this back wall. Notice the highlight of the room. Double click to open it and on the structure panel I'm going to raise this up exactly 24 inches plus 24. If I press the tab key you can see the values update. Go ahead and close that. Notice the back walls increase in height and then this is going to be an attic wall since the ceiling on the other side is two feet lower. Let's do the same thing on the porch. Now if I click on the slab back on the porch that's actually the foundation and where I want to highlight this room is just to click on this back wall notice the outline of the room. Again I'm going to click the open button down here and make the same change in here on the structure. I'm going to raise this up the 24 inches. Press the tab key, see the values update and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click that there is a roof over this room. There's also an option if you wanted to add the ceiling over this room you could highlight that as well. Notice the two side walls did not increase by the two feet as this back wall did because this porch is created using an invisible wall to create that room. Now for the entryway I'm going to do the same type of thing. Let's go ahead into the structure here. Double click to open the room. Now according to the draftsman in this case this is increasing not quite 24 inches. It's going to increase 21 inches. Go ahead and press the tab key leave the rest of the settings OK and then I'm going to make one final change to the exterior porch. Let's go ahead and open that up and again on the structure panel that's going to increase by the same 21 inches and it's going to have a roof over it and there's also an option down here that will repair your ceiling since there is not a ceiling structure in there to use a soffit surface for your ceiling. Okay, those are all the changes we need to make. Let's go back into our floor plan view and let's use our camera for the full overview including the roof and take a look and see if this is everything we wanted. Now the front doesn't look too bad but let's rotate around to the back and take a look at the back. Let me zoom out here just a little bit. Let me bring open the original rendering before we raised anything off the back. By raising those rooms, the porch, the living room, in the back of the house it dramatically changed the roof. You notice that on the left side of the change where my cursor is versus the rendering that I have down here, this is a hip roof and the automatic roof tool has dramatically changed that roof. It's also done the same thing over to the right side of the design. Again that's a hip roof on the lower section. And in a remodel condition you want to leave your existing roof alone and add the new roof components. So I'm actually going to step back a little bit and show you the correct way to make those changes. Now back in the floor plan view in this 3D dollhouse view I'm actually going to go back in and I'm going to reset the structure back to the default value. That check mark there will move it back to the 8 feet and I'm going to do that for the other three rooms and I'm also going to remove the roof over the front porch and the side porch and I'll go ahead and make the other changes so we can reset that. All right, I've reset the other three rooms back in the 3D view. We're exactly back where we were. Notice that the hip roofs are on the back and on the front. Now this is where in Home Designer Suite, Home Designer Architectural, 
all products but Home Designer Pro have an automatic roof and anytime you make changes to your room it's going to change your roof. In most cases for remodel condition you want to leave that existing roof and in this case I need to turn off the automatic rebuild roofs so I have control over how to do that. Let's go back into the build menu and I'm going to turn off the automatic rebuild roofs. You'll find that setting up here and I'm just going to uncheck the automatic rebuild roofs option and now Anytime I make a change, it will not update the roof, and I'm going to show you how to draw the manual roof planes so they tie into this roof and will make the changes back in the floor plan. So let's go back into the dollhouse view. Again, a little bit of busy work, and I'm just going to go back in, and I'm going to change the structure back to where we had it, plus 24 inches. I'll do the same thing for the porches and then put the ceilings back on. Okay, now I've made the changes where I've raised the porch, the rear porch, and the rear living room 24 inches and the front entry and the front porch 21 inches. Notice right in this area right here how we have an angled wall. The roof did not automatically update and it has the original roof and it's actually cutting that wall down. Same thing is happening up in the front of the house where it's angling those down. We'll take a cross-section view and make sure that as we make the changes in the roof we can make the appropriate adjustments so that that's accurate. Back in the full overview, again, the automatic roof is off, so all of those room heights did not make any changes. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to return to the floor plan view, and I'm going to show you the process, how to create these manual roof planes that will cover the rear porch, tie into the larger room. We'll do the same thing on the front. And then this larger roof section back in here will need to be adjusted slightly so that it will allow the headroom in that new 24-inch increase. Let me tile my views. Let's go ahead and close the dollhouse view. I'm going to press Shift F6 on the keyboard to tile my views. In the floor plan view here on the left, notice this dashed line inside the living room. In that dollhouse view, you noticed how the walls were getting cut at an angle. You'll be able to see this if I take a cross-section view. Let me use a tool in the menu called the back clip cross-section camera. And all I'm going to do is create a very small slice in here so you can see what's happening with that ceiling. And as I zoom in, you can see where that ceiling is being cropped down by that roof above. And we'll make the adjustment so that this ceiling can go flat all the way to the exterior wall. Let's go ahead and go back into the floor plan view. I'm first going to draw the roof planes to cover the porch. And again, why I'm using manual roof planes is in this remodel condition, for the most part, I don't want any of the other roof planes to really be adjusted except this bigger roof plane. We'll end up pulling that back here in a minute. But as far as the two hip roofs and where these tie in, I want to leave those in place so the automatic roof tool will not allow me to do that now that I've raised the ceiling back in this porch area and back in the living room area. In the floor plan view, I'm going to draw a manual roof plane. Go ahead and select the roof plane tool come down near the exterior invisible wall of the porch and I'm going to hold my left mouse button down and click and drag. Then I'm just going to come in here, release, and click up slope. And you'll see that in the 3D view. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over to the side over here in this small area. Again, just outside the wall, click and drag on the outside of the wall, holding your left mouse button down, come up and click up slope. And you'll see those two roof planes appear. Now we want to join and miter these two roof planes. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and select this edge and I want to join this edge over and miter it to this edge. While the roof plane is selected, you'll notice down here in the very bottom of your menu, there is a join roof planes tool. Let's go ahead and use that and click on the edge that we want to join and that will miter that in. Now if you kind of zoom around here, you'll notice that the fascia and the gutter are exactly at the same height. And since we have an invisible wall, the roof plane didn't adjust the 24 inch increase that we wanted in here. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and draw one more roof plane and we'll make the adjustment to all three roof planes. Let's go ahead and use the roof plane again off to the side over here. I'm going to hold my left mouse button down, click and drag, click up slope. And I'm going to use the miter tool to miter this edge here, down here in the edit menu. And I'm going to click this edge over here. Now, just like we raised the roof or ceiling up in the porch area, let's go ahead and choose all three of these roof planes. I'm going to hold my shift key down 
and shift click on each one of those. We'll use the open command down here in the lower left hand menu. I want to raise those roof planes up 24 inches and I'm just going to click this lock pitch. Go ahead and put in plus 24 inches to raise that roof up. Press the tab key. You can see what the value is and now you can see where those roof planes are. Let's go ahead and tilt our view down a little bit and I'm actually going to toggle on the glass house view so you can see exactly what I'm doing in a little bit easier fashion. Let's change our camera over here to the glass house view because so I want to tie this larger roof plane in. Let's Let's go ahead and select it. I want to pull this back until it basically stops at that point and then we'll go ahead and pull the other two roof planes. Let's go ahead and select this so that it's at least past the ridge over here and I'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll go ahead and pull it so that it's at least past that ridge and then I'm going to select this edge over here Again, use the Join Roof Planes tool and we'll join the ridge over to the other side and that will automatically join that. Now the next thing I need to do in the 3D view is I need to figure out where this roof plane is going to intersect back into the larger roof. And you can kind of figure out what it is in this 3D view by pulling it back, but you may not be exact. There's actually a tool that will help you on that intersection. From the plan view, let me zoom out just a little bit so we can see the larger roof plane. And I'm really interested in figuring out where that's going to join back in here. In your preferences, again under the edit menu let's go down to preferences on the architectural panel there's a setting down here in the bottom to automatically place roof intersection points now I'm going to go ahead and select the larger roof plane right in this area right here with the larger roof plane selected at the ridge which is this point just above the fireplace in the 3D view that I've selected I'm now going to click on the ridge of the smaller roof plane down here. Notice the point that appears up in this area. Let's go ahead and pull this roof up a little ways. And I'm going to grab this section right here and I'm going to click on that point. And that's exactly where that roof intersects in the other roof. Now I could do the same thing on this side. Let's go ahead and pull this up. And I'm just going to grab this side over here. We'll pull that corner up to the exact same point get our snap indicator and now I have that roof intersected exactly where I want it. Next I need to determine where this intersection of this corner needs to be on the roof plane. I'm going to select the roof that I want it to intersect with which is the larger roof plane back here. While that's selected I'm going to click on the edge of the roof plane to know where that intersection is. Notice the CAD point that it places We'll go ahead and snap that in and I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to select the roof plane that I want to intersect with over here. Click on the edge and that should generate the point that I need and those should be in parallel across from one another. Now that I have that exactly indicated in here with that roof, we can maximize our 3D view and take a look at it. Now the next thing I need to do is put a beam in here and a couple of columns to support it. To create the columns, you could open up the library. There's a number of columns you could search for. I'm just going to use a basic slab. I'm going to come in here and draw approximately the size of the column that I want. You can highlight these. You can size them. Let's go ahead and set it to be 18 inches square in this direction. And then we'll also highlight that dimension and we'll set it to be 18 inches in that direction. If I double click to open it, I'm going to go ahead and set the thickness or the height to be about 120 and then the floor to bottom we'll just set that so that it comes just slightly down the foundation. And from the 3D view, let's go back into the 3D view. You can see the column and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to use the copy tool down here and there's a reflect about tool after you select the copy tool down here in the edit menu. We'll use that and we'll reflect about the center of that room so we place the column exactly on the same position. Now that column probably came in as a slab. Let's tilt our view up a little bit. I'm going to toggle the camera back to our standard render camera. I'm going to pick up the material using the material eyedropper off of the top of the, the fireplace shroud and I'm just going to apply that onto each of the columns and we'll use that color for those columns. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out a support mechanism for the roof and to do that what I'm going to do is go back to the floor plan view and I'm going to use our beam tool to create a beam that will support the, uh, the roof structure. In the floor plan view, I'm going to use the tool specifically for a roof beam. I'm just going to come in over the top of the wall and I'm going to drag out a roof beam that goes into the interior of this wall down in this area right here. Now let's use a cross section tool and make sure that we have this positioned exactly. I'm going to use a back clip cross section camera and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a small section right through that portion 
of the roof and that beam. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see what we have. And you can see that beam has come down and positioned itself right here on that wall. And what we want to do is we want to actually raise that beam up so that it's going to sit on top of that column. As you go ahead and raise that beam up, it may adjust itself because there's an automatic height setting. Let's double click on it and let's remove the automatic height setting. And if you want to be specific about the depth of the beam, uh, the bottom height information, you can come in here and you can type that in. You can also choose which type of structure member it is down here in the uh, drop down option. Let's just go ahead and leave it to lumber, uncheck automatic height, and now I can actually come in here and we can raise that beam up so that it sits right on top of that portion of the post and now we have that set. Once the beam is in place, let's go back into the 3D view, make some final adjustments. Again, I'm going to use the material eyedropper. I'm going to pick up the color off of the fascia board. I'm going to apply that. Notice my icon is actually in blend mode. I'm going to change that down here so that it paints it as a solid body. My cursor is now changed to a spray can. Let's go ahead and apply that to the beam and I have that set. Let's go back to the floor plan view. We'll make a copy of that beam. Sometimes when you click on it, got all those temporary dimensions on, let's go ahead and tab. Notice in the lower portion of my menu it says roof beam. Let's use the copy tool. Copy, reflect about, center of the roof, and that places the beam right over on the center. Let's go back into the floor plan or the 3D view and take a look. Now the final thing I need to do on the back is actually pull this roof down and you'll notice back in the cross section we pulled earlier, we need to pull this roof back so that it, we have a flat ceiling in this room. So I want to actually pull it back to at least this point right in here. So let's go ahead and tile our views. Shift F6 on the keyboard. You can also come in here and tile your views. In this case, notice the shortcut Shift F6. Now the dashed line in the floor plan view represents where that ceiling plane is intersecting. That's this point over here in the cross section view. So I need to pull that roof back to at least that point. On this roof edge right here, I'm going to go ahead and create a break so that I can pull just a portion of this roof back from this corner and this corner. While the roof is selected, there's a break command down here in the edit menu, break line. And I'm just going to create a couple of breaks, one on each side. I'll make adjustments. I'm usually not too specific about this. Let's go ahead and create one more break over here. You can use that break tool. Let's go ahead and pull this back and snap it onto that ceiling right in this area right here. Now notice in this section right here we have our flat ceiling. Let's go ahead and slide our roof section over in this area until we get a snap point. And let's go ahead and pull it over here and get this snap point. Now. If we take a look, that may have solved the problem, but we may have to take a look inside this room and make sure that this is not coming down. Otherwise, I may need to pull this roof plane back a little bit. Let's go ahead and take our camera view inside the house. Using our camera tool in the menu here, let's and just kind of take a peek and point and click in that direction, see if it looks okay. You can see we're actually close, but where that roof is still cutting down here, I think we want to pull that roof over so that it meets the attic wall on this side and also meets the wall on the other side. So let's go ahead and make those corrections back in the floor plan view. Let's grab that roof section right in here and I'm just going to pull it back and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and pull that back. In the 3D view you can see that we've repaired both of the side walls and then the ceiling goes up to the 10 feet all the way across here. And you can see our ceiling change, the 2 foot change. And you can confirm that back in the cross section view. You have a nice flat ceiling back in here. And then in the full 3D view, let's go back, take a full 3D view. You can see the design has incorporated the roof. Let's take a look at the framing for that roof. I've actually got automatic framing on. There's a tool called Delete Surface. Let's click on the surface up here. You can see the surface of the main roof. Click one more time and now you can see that framing component. You can reset those by clicking on the Delete Surface tool and it will then repair the 3D view. Now the next thing I want to do is for the final portion of the video is I want to go through a very similar step and repeat the process on the front of the house. The steps are exactly the same as the rear portion of the house and I'm going to do a quick time lapse on the front section for you. Mm -hmm. We 
we've started with our remodel project with the as-built, rendered that in our 3D software, getting as-built measurements from Room Planner. So we could see the front, we could also see the back. And then we added the new roof on the back of the house that you can add on there with the columns and the beams. And then we did the same thing on the front. And then I also then rendered that using the watercolor option in the program to provide the watercolor view. The homeowner can now see the changes with the roof and then move ahead with the remodel project. And you can see the difference between having the covered porch and having the regular porch without the ceiling on it very quickly to help visualize that. If you want to learn more about the Chief Architect and Home Designer products, you can visit our website download a free trial version. For Home Designer Pro, you can download a trial version and try it, as well as uh, any of the other products we have up on the website. If you have any questions, please let us know, and thanks for watching the video.